Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Greg Cagle. Greg's experience coaching and consulting global leaders and organizations since 2008 have made him an expert in many areas of leadership, business, and culture. His most recent venture takes form in the launch of his newest book, The Four Dimensions of Culture and the Leaders Who Shape Them. Greg pulls from his decades of experience both as a business owner and advisor to provide a roadmap for leaders that fill in the culture gap that lies between becoming a great leader and building a successful business. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Greg Cagle. Thank you, Ed. Great to be here, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, first off, Greg, why do you do what you do? Yeah, so I that's a I love that question, and uh, for me, uh, I, I you know I, I I define myself as kind of a serial entrepreneur, and so my history over the course of years has been uh, kind of starting, building, and and selling uh, companies. And uh, a- after I did that like five times, what I really realized is that my passion uh, now lies with helping others do the same? How do you build an organization successfully? How do you help the people that you lead live up to their potential? How do you create brand warriors on the front line of your organization? Uh, and I'm just really, really passionate about that. And um, and so that's why I do it. And tell me about your new book, The Four Dimensions of Culture and the Leaders Who Shape Them. Yeah. So that book has been uh, a two-year project for me. And it kind of draws on all of my years of experience, both as an entrepreneur and also as an executive coach and working with other uh, other people in their organizations, in their companies. And here's what we found. We found that if you talk to entrepreneurs and business owners, they'll tell you that they're focused on wanting to build the best organization, the best company that they can. And they also understand that it's their leadership and how they lead their organizations that's going to help them do that. And what we found is there's a gap between that. There's a gap between creating an organization that's high performing and an industry leader and and, and competitor and being a great leader. And what's in that gap is culture. And we discovered that leaders don't really pay the necessary attention they should to the culture of their organization and focusing heavily on what do people do when the leader's not there? Is there consistency in the way that they behave? Is there consistency in the way they think about their business or they think about their customers? Is there uh, expectations on how they're expected to interact with each other and collaborate together? And it's, it's, it's the owners and leaders of those companies that have to focus on that. And so what we did in the book is we said, hey, here is a roadmap, number one, to what culture is. Here are the four distinct dimensions that reside in every organization, in every business, And here's the leader culture connection and how you build that culture that's collaborative, that's innovative, that's creative, and that creates passionate brand warriors within your organization. So that's kind of that's kind of what was driving the book. Well, let me ask uh, is and since you brought this up, actually, a deceptively simple question that I've I've uh, would like to hear you expound on. What is culture? Ah, Yeah. This is interesting. I'm, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's not deceptively simple because one of the things that I found as I was preparing and doing research for the book is in working with my clients and executives coaching and, and working with people from Fortune 50 companies to privately held organizations, I would ask them, do you think culture is important? And they would immediately say, oh, absolutely. It's extremely important. And then I'd say, well, do you have a good culture at your organization? Oh, yeah, we have have a really good culture. And then I would ask the big question. So tell me, how do you define culture in your organization? No one could answer that question. And it was, well, you know, this, uh, I'm not really sure. But I even had one one leader tell me, so, well, Greg, you got to understand culture is, the thing you need to understand about culture is culture is, well, culture is (laughs) culture. And so uh, we, we set out to define it, and it's real simple. Here's how we define culture in, in the book. And we, we believe this uh, is, says it all. Culture is formed by how the people in the organization think, how they act, 
and how they interact. It's those three things. And as in leaders, if you can develop and design a culture that says, hey, here's how we think around here. Not that we want people thinking the same way, but we want them thinking in the right direction. Here's how you're expected to behave or act. And here's how we expect you to act, interact with each other and our customers. And so that's that's the definition of culture. And if we do it right, then you and I, if we're working in the same business together, we're working together, we're co-workers, we're thinking, our thinking is aligned, our behaviors are consistent with each other, and they're working towards a common goal. We have unity, we're unified, and we interact with each other in a way that is mutually respectful, that um, allows each of us to contribute in our own unique way, and we respect our differences, and we're willing to have vigorous and respectful debate. All of that occurs when your culture's healthy. Werner Earhart, who is the founder of Est Seminars, who's a little bit of a weird dude, but um, he he did beat the IRS in a tax uh, scandal. So I, I always I was I always appreciate him. But one of the things that he said is that if you want to transform your culture, you have to change the language that you use. Sometimes even the words that you use inside an organization can be a contributor toward culture. What is your reaction to that? It's, a, it's an absolutely 100 um, percent accurate statement. I'll tell you why. What we have found in the best, highest performing cultures that are collaborative and consistent, that they allow, allow people to scale their business and deliver on their brand promise, there's a common language. There's a vernacular that not only we all use and relate to, but it allows for a tremendous amount of speed in communication. And I absolutely agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and that's one of the what's it's one of the it's one of the foundational elements of building a, a, a culture is do we have that common language and do we all speak it and understand it in a way that allows us to contribute at our highest potential? And Greg, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours and why are they a hero? Yeah. So I knew you were going to ask that question because I did my homework and I listened to some of your podcasts and I really appreciate that you asked that question. Mine is probably my answer to that is probably uh, not that exciting, but it's true. Uh, my hero uh, literally was my father. And the, re the reason he was my hero came from very, very humble beginnings um, in, in the hills of Tennessee and you know, from a very large family, very poor. He had every reason to not go out into the world and build something for himself. And he overcame all of that. And uh, he, he taught me. He taught me how to go after my dreams and aspirations. He taught me a work ethic uh, and that there were no shortcuts in life. And he, he lived it out. He lived it. Uh, he, he taught it by example. And um, man, I just, it, he is without a doubt my hero. And lastly, Greg, how can somebody contact you? Yeah, they can contact me a couple of ways. Uh, you can find me uh, at my uh, a website, which is uh, gokagle, uh, gokagle.com, or uh, simply reach out to me via email, which is greg, G-R-E-G, -E at gokagle.com. And Kegel is spelled C-A-G-L-E, so G-O-C-A-G-L-E. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. Greg Kegel, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Ed, thanks so much for having me. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.